If you don't like me, don't invite me on your podcast. We can turn it off. Fuck them. Mr. James Locke. What's happening? Thank you for having me. I want to delve deep, try and find the real James Locke. It's very hard. Your mum left you when you were five yeah. years old. It's fundamentally, you do need two parents. If your mum and dad are split up, it does have a knock-on effect. You said that one of your downfalls is that you invest in girls first. What makes me very powerful as a, as a person is that I'm very self-aware. It doesn't mean I don't make the same mistakes. You've always got your fingers in different pies. I imagine you, your dad's an influence in this respect. Every day when you work for yourself, you wake up with nothing. It's down to you to go out and get it. You've got to take control of your own life. You said that when you were a kid, you were a little fatty. When did that change? I've always liked sports. I played every sport when I was at school. Fundamentally, it's good for your mind. You've been quite open with your battles uh, with body dysmorphia. You're finding fault in yourself. I look shit there. No, you don't. And obviously it's emphasized when you're on TV or in the public eye, the better you look, the more money you make. Hey, Matt Haycox here with a quick interruption just to say, I hope you're liking the show, but please, please like, subscribe or comment. That's how we can bring you better guests. That's how we can make the show better each week. So please, please, that's all I ever ask of you. We never charge. We never ask anything else. Just please give us a few moments of your time. But I want, I want to do something a bit, I want to try and find a different angle. Okay. Uh, because uh, I guess you, I'm sure you talk a lot about Tower, you talk a lot about reality and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, but I want to, I want to delve deep and, and try and find the real James Locke. You know, who's, uh, who, who, who's, who's the man behind the screen? Many people, especially women, have tried. <laughs> well, m m maybe we can, uh, maybe we can help them get a few percent along the road. But uh, I want, I want to like go back to the beginning. And uh, you know, you and I went for dinner last night. We were talk yep. talking a little bit, and uh, we we're kind of talking about this a bit off camera. And you, obviously, you told me that um, your mom left you when you were when you were five yeah. years old, and that was kind of almost like the the lead into a conversation where I think you think there's probably some lingering after effects from that, and you know that that you're a lot more fragile or vulnerable than, yeah. than people think, or that you would come across, and and you probably date that back to when your mom first left. So let's mm -hmm. let's go back to little five year old James. He probably still had pecs and uh, pecs and big thighs, but. Uh, a little fat kid. <laughs> oh, really? Mm. Oh, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about that it's separately. Huge, then. We'll talk about that separately. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, can you remember your mum leaving to this I, day? I just feel like, uh, look, we were chatting yesterday, and it's um, it's a bit of a it's a weird one and a sensitive subject in the sense that people don't really think too much into I don't know, do think into like their parents and stuff. But look, I'm look, we got very we got very deep yesterday last night, but over a couple of bottles of wine. <laughs> but you do need, it's fundamental that you do need two parents. You do need the two parents there. You know, I'm not saying that people that are not well-rounded or well-grounded people and people that ain't gone on to do X, Y, and Z having, you know, either, you know, no parents or, or a mum or a dad. But having two pa like two parents there is fundamental for me. I feel like you do need, you benefit from both having a, a mum and a dad. Do you but know what I'm are you saying needing both parents in the same house in a, in a relationship, or you just need the support of yeah. of them? I think if having them in that in the, in the same house in the same environment, you know, how it's you know traditionally how it's meant to be. I think having them parents there is fundamental. It does make a big difference. If your mum and dad are split up, yeah, you come from a they call it a broken home, but it, it sounds worse than it is. But it does have a knock on effect to the person. You know, whether you accept that, acknowledge that. However you may deal that, uh, uh, look, however you deal with that as a person, that is you. Everyone's an individual. So how you deal with that, I'm not trying to say you're, you, listen, you need to be a certain type of person or that will sculpt you as a certain type of person, having a mum or, you know, having a mum and dad there, having been in the same environment or not being in the same environment or not having them at all. Does that make sense? But what would you say that it's more important to have your mom and dad together at the, at the expense of them even getting on? So I look at, I've got a 17 year old daughter. She, uh, I mean, me and her mom haven't mm. been together under the same roof since she was probably two. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, she's a great woman, her mom. She's been a you know, great mom to the, my daughter and she's been a very easy ex wife for, for me to yeah. have, which is probably one in a billion, well, really. Want, yeah. uh, and we've always, We've always gotten on separately. We've always very properly co-parented. Have, have never had any issues whatsoever. And you know that. I mean, you know, she really is. I mean, every parent says it, but I mean, that daughter really is a credit to the pair yeah. of us. And you know, people laugh and say, "How the fuck has she come out like she's come out?" You it's know, your kid. Say. If I'd have stayed with her mom, mm. and I was listen when when my daughter was two, I was 25, 26, 27, mm. running the strip clubs and stuff. Mm. Yes, listen, I, I'd have carried on my 
behavior as a horrible husband and you know misbehave we'd have been arguing and mom was going batty with me all the time yeah. you know if, if she'd have had another 10 or 15 years of that i would imagine that would have hurt her more than the fact that she didn't have a mom and dad living in the same house does that make sense yeah but listen again this is to do with circumstances and each story mm -hmm. each person as an individual do you know what i'm saying like listen this is becoming very particular because you used to work in strip clubs but then at the same time you say did you need to work in the strip clubs and then be in there drinking, socialising? Just if you went there and just treat it as a job, obviously it's a very unsociable job. It's a social job in the aspect for the punters, but it's unsociable for your family. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, for instance, I'm always up London in the week networking. I'm having meetings. You know, this in London. After this, I've got another meeting with my business partner. So I'm having I'm, I'm at meetings and I'll probably pop out, go for dinner. Then when my like when my family want to see me of a weekend, I'm shattered by the weekend. So I end up chilling. You know, well, most people work all week, nine to fives, whatever. Then they, that's when they party or that's when they, they, you know, you know, that's when they indulge in whatever they, you know, hobbies, seeing friends and family, going out, whatever. That's what they, do you know what I'm saying? It's a very mm. reverse. Everything, everything depends on circumstances and the person, if that makes sense. But I do strongly believe, look, I can't speak from a, a parent's perspective because I haven't got any children. But what I'm saying is from the, from the perspective of being a, a child from, you know, a so-called broken home, I feel, even though, listen, I've been brought up by my dad and I feel like I, he done a very good job, um, still had contact with my mum. I feel I'm very well-rounded as a person, you know. I'm not, anyone that knows me would know I'm very well-rounded, but I'm not, so, look, there's definitely factors there where things would have been different had my mum and dad been together. You know, things would have been different. I'm not trying to say it's taken, taken anything away from me as a person, you know. But I back myself 100%. But I'm saying that it takes, there's, there will be something lacking of, of being brought up um, or a certain outlook. And, and well, using you as a specific example, yeah. I mean, what do you think is lacking or would have been different? Um, I'm brought up very tough, tough love. So in a sense, I'm a very much, like, I'm very old. Look, how I'm brought up anyway is uh, a very old school East End Values. Which you is were living with some... your dad. Your mum yeah. left, and you were just living with yeah, your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my brother and sister was with my mum, and I stayed Why? with my dad because we just like we the the split when the split happened as a kid. I didn't want to leave my dad. All the kids went with a mum. That's natural for all the kids to go with a mum. I didn't want to leave my dad, so I stayed with him. But you can definitely see a difference if you met me and my siblings. You can see a difference between me and my brother. There's a lot of similarities. We're very similar looking how we talk, but then there's a lot of differences. There's a lot of differences. And you'd have to meet my brother for me to, 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 to acknowledge that. And you can see what, whereas one's been brought up softer and one's been brought up more, you know, more uh, as, a, as a man, it's, it's very tough love or more sensitive. You can tell the difference. My brother's a very, a lot more sensitive than me, you know? Absolutely. And see, sometimes people misperceive me thinking that as if I'm a little bit arrogant or I don't give a fuck. A lot's happened to me in my life. Like I said, I like a lot's happened to a lot of people. I don't sit here, obviously, cry about it. I don't talk about it. I just get on with it. But again, loads of factors over the years sculpt someone as a person, you know? And I think people sometimes forget, you know, especially when you're in, 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 in this industry, like people will, um, you know, judge. So everyone thinks I'm, I'm, I was born with a silver, you know, I'm some rich kid, born with a silver spoon in my mouth from, from Chigwell. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not from Essex, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not, and I'm definitely not from uh, Chigwell or Bourne. Like if I fail, it's, it's all on me. Do you know what I'm saying? So people have a misperception and then see what we find in everyday life. People, you know, you don't know what people are going through. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't know what people are going through on a daily basis. You don't know what their background, what their circumstances are. It is what it is. It's, I'm not sitting there trying to cry about it. It is what it is, it's life, you get on with it. But I'm just saying that as a whole, there's a lot of factors that sculpt a person in general. Whether you acknowledge it or accept it or you don't, there's a lot of things, even me. As much as I might feel I'm well-grounded, I'm happy who I am. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm very, I'm a very contempt place in my life, yeah? There's still things that could have been better. You can't say there's always things that could have been done better or could have been a better situation. Do you know what I'm saying? And you say that you're a well-rounded well person. Were there times that you look back at where you were less well-rounded than you are now, um, you know, be, be, because of because of that background and you know things that you've had to work on? I think sometimes, especially in relationships, what um, you might you're sitting here now, you're saying at the beginning, oh, look, he's the ladies' man. Yes, I can go out, I can socialize. I'm, listen, not just a ladies' man. I'm a very sociable person. 
I've got a lot of friends, not a lot of friends, I've got a lot of acquaintances. I'm a sociable person, you know, whether you're a male, female, whatever. But when it comes to actually being in relationships with people, especially with a girl, sometimes being, at, sometimes when you need that sensitive side, I don't think I'm that as sensitive sometimes. See, sometimes I'm, in, I'm, I'm awkward in situations. I'm awkward. And it's not through being cold. It's just through where I'm brought up very tough love and just with a one man's dynamic. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though my dad is affectionate, listen, I mean, my dad have a cuddle. He, listen, it, it, it's affectionate. It's, it's a weird one. Again, it's, it's like people, I feel like people can relate to it. It's a weird one, but you're, you're listen, I think everyone will get it. I says, and, and I think you understand what I'm saying, where if you're more affectionate, women are, listen, they are the, the fairer sex. They are a lot more emotional and that's not a bad thing. You know, I think that if anything, that makes them stronger than us. So, but you say that, um, that, in relationships, you maybe haven't been as sensitive as as you could have been, or you would have liked to have been. Yeah, but I think that's been a, a, a that's been a, a um, that's been a very um, what's the word? That's been a very holding you back in relationships. Yeah. But what? But then you also said to me last night, you said that probably one of your downfalls mm. is that you invest in girls first. Yeah. Um, I mean, which I mean, to I me, those, for a lot of men, though. They, they, they sound, they sound a, a bit contradictory, those two things, because I guess you, you know, you might not be sensitive, but you are so you, because I'm not putting that girl first. I overinvest. So basically, because I'm aware that what gives me, what makes me very powerful as a, as a person is that I'm very self-aware. Self-awareness is, is like acknowledgement yeah. is powerful. Like I know this is the thing as well, because as much as it's powerful, it also <laughs> is, it's like, doesn't mean I don't make the same mistakes. Like, like do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, so even though um, I'm self-aware, like I know my downfalls. Um, what are they? I think my downfalls are that sometimes. Look, like a lot of people, I think, are people please. Um, I can't sit here. Why, I, for their benefit or for yours? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like it comes from a place of. Um, it comes from a good place because, like, I genuinely, listen. Everyone's going to sit and say they're a good person, but I've got a big heart. With my heart on my sleeve. That's why, you know, I look, I don't know, I over, this is what I'm saying, I over invest, I over invest in things and do become a bit of a yes man, a bit of a people pleaser, which is bad for you. You can't, you can never win being a yes man or being a people pleaser. Do you know what I'm saying? And then that's sometimes because of that, you get taken advantage of. So as much as I might be not as uh, affectionate, it doesn't mean I don't. Over, then you over invest in other ways. I think for me, the biggest downfall of being a people pleaser, because I don't know if I'd have necessarily exactly use those words, but I, I can completely relate to what you're talking about. Because, yeah. you know, over historically, I've always really said yes to too many things, you know, help too many people out. Yes. But they say, you say help too many people out. You know, I like to be helpful, like to be generous, like to give people what they mm. want. And I don't. And then if I get let down or fucked over, that doesn't really bother me because that's just I just look at that as part of the course. I think my biggest regret in doing, let's say, too much for too many people mm. is you have no fucking time for yourself. And exactly, one of the best yeah. things of being able to say no or, or yeah. not being able to learning to say no, because I think it is a it's maybe not a skill, but it's certainly a muscle, you know, like l l mm. learning to say no. It's a powerful muscle. Is is that you get, you know, you get that time back either for yourself or for, yeah. the, for the ones you want to concentrate on because I spend so much time doing things for other people. That I come home and I'm just fucked. And, you know, barely got time for the missus, certainly no time for myself. And, um, you know, and then... It's not healthy. See mm. that? It's not healthy. See, like, now I'm at a point where, you know, saying no, I'm at a point where... What's held me back, what was, obviously, what we're talking about, over the years, what's held me back is over-investing, being a bit of a yes man. I think a lot of people, being a people pleaser, I think a lot of people... The last couple of years has been a massive transition for me. So, if I look, we can go out, like you said, I go out yesterday... And socialize, and I'm still that same person, but I just don't say yes to everything. Say no is a power itself. Because do you know what I'm saying? When look, when you when it comes to a point where you want something, these people that you're saying yes to, let them let's see if they come and help you. Do you know what I'm saying? And lately, the last few years have been a massive transition for me because I've actually started saying no. Then people, I've actually lost a lot of the people around me, but they're 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 the fake people, they're the people you don't yeah. want around you. Um, I've, I'm a lot happier. You know, see these things, you see these memes on, on, on you know, Instagram or wherever on, online. Um, being on my own, going for drink, eating on my own. I, I actually love being on my own. I train on my own, eat on my own. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on my own most days, most of the time. And that's, that's okay. Go to my meetings, do my thing. 
when I'm meeting, when I'm doing things like that, it's, it's business. If, if things if things ain't serving me, I am selfish, but selfish in a good way because that's a sign of self-respect. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. When you're overly pleasing, look, someone to go out, you know, I don't know. We could be, I could be, I'm here now. This is what, like, not fair, we're, we're friends, but this is work. We're doing something productive. Yeah, we're talking about productive things. I think us men talking about things like this is is, is a productive thing. Or I could be out on the piss talking shit with a load of fucking people who just want me there for a good time, paying the bill, yeah? Because I'm like a few Richards. Do you know what I mean? It's, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a negative thing. Next to, like, where's that going to get me? But when you start saying no to them people, they start, oh, he's changed. Who does he think he is? Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you can't, pleasing people is not the answer. And I guess, well, <laughs> Have you seen, you must have seen a big difference in that from the time that you weren't on the telly to the time you were on the of telly. Course. I mean, I mean, pre-TV, were you, you know, were you still that people pleaser? Yeah, pre-TV, I think everyone, as I'm trying to say, I think everyone is a victim of it. Even your pals are calling you up, you don't even really, really want to go out, but you're, you're out, you're on the piss, you don't want to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. people pleasing it, at, some, in, at some level. Obviously, it's emphasised and it's, you know, times 10 since I've been on the TV because everyone wants to come out and party with me. You know what I'm saying? And that's caused another problem in relationships. You know, you're on this show or, you know, you're in reality TV and people want to be wrapped around you. Otherwise, most of the people I meet in this day and age, I would never meet if I hadn't been on TV. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not the people I grew up with. You know, they're not people I was socialised with or would have, you know, would have been in any environment where I would have met them, you know, again, this is pros and cons of the industry. Yes, it's, it, there's a load, obviously it, there's more pros and cons, otherwise I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be doing it. It's opened so many doors, but there is a dark side to it. Do you know what I'm saying? As much as you might go to an event and meet 10 potential, you know, potential clients in a sense that, you know, I might meet a couple of agents, I might meet people that, you know, producers for shows or people that, you know, have, you know, own brands, want to endorse, want to work with me. There's also negative where there's people there that's just want to party and it's not, listen, it's not on them. It's down to you as an individual about being... And like you, I mean, you say about being self-aware, but, you know, as long as you're aware or self-aware, I mean, I guess, yes, it's more amplified in the media situation, but it's the same in everyday life, isn't it? You, you walk into the, the same, room, there's, yeah, good people, there's good people, there's bad people, and I guess you, you get... You get better at reading people over time, and it's probably not too hard for you now to see a couple yeah. of guys in a room and think, you know what, they're, they're, not, also, they're not for me. They're not necessarily always bad, is what I'm trying to say. Like, see, this this is giving a vague explanation for something that's a lot more in depth. Now, when you're at people that just because they want to party with you doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they're, they're a negative or they're a bad person. But maybe bad for you. Bad for me in that situation, but that's down to you as a person mm -hmm. saying, no, no, not for me, you know. I'm not, yeah, I'm not drinking tonight. I'm uh, I'm having an early one. And then having a willpower to tell them that, be firm with it and then leave. But what I'm saying is that just because they want to part with you doesn't make them bad people. You know, they're not seeing the negative. They're not doing something malicious. You know what I'm saying? They're just like thinking, look, yeah. we're going to, if anything, it's coming from a, maybe a place of of endearment. You know, it's, it, again, You've got to take control of your own life. No one's here. No one's coming to rescue you. You know what I'm saying? It's down to you to address or, you know, look at a situation, uh, analyze it, and then make your own your own decisions for yourself. Because not like I said, no one is here. Um, no one's here to rescue you. No one's here to, to, to mother you or baby you. You've got to look after yourself. So when you say... Um, that you invest in girls first. What, mm. what, what, what do you mean by that? Not in get, invest in girls first. So what happens with me? Or in a, when you're having a right. relationship? So in, no, but anyone in general. Mm -hmm. So what happens? I have a lot of acquaintances, girls, uh, boys or girls. You know, I'm a social, I'm a so, very social person. What happens is when someone, I, when I do invest in someone, so with me, I'm very, like might come across as a bit standoffish or cold. It's not cold. I am standoffish because I, you know, I'm standoffish. Right. This, this sounds a bit, it doesn't, it contradicts itself. As much as I can be sociable, I don't invest. I don't like, I might be out, we might bump the job out, we might have to go out, have a, have a great night, or we'll be in the gym. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we'll we be chatting and whatever, get on like ass on fire. That doesn't mean I'm going to invest. I'm not then ringing you going, oh, what, what are you doing? Do you want to come and chill? I'll do it. When, that, that, when you're, you go past the point where it's not just, you're not socializing, you're not an acquaintance, you're investing in a person where, you know, you're, you're seeing someone on a regular basis, um, whether it's a man or a woman, you, you then, when you're giving someone, you're making time for someone. 
rather than just, you know, sparing a moment sort of thing or bumping into someone. When you're actually making time for someone, that, that you're invested in someone, you know? When you're changing your plans, look, whether it's, look, the weekend, whether I'm going to, speaking to a lady and going, look, what are you doing the weekend? I'm putting her, making her priority. Or I'm speaking to my pals, I'm like, look, so what, what are you doing tonight? You're, you're, and then, oh, you're not free to this time. You're changing your schedule for I'll someone. around you, yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So when you invest in someone like that, that's that's an investment. Do you know what I'm saying? You're you're making you're freeing up time. Your time's precious. Freeing up time for someone is an investment. Then what there's one thing being with one of your pals, that's that's a mine, obviously, like just you know, changing the range for, for for them. Um it's like tonight, I'm I just singing at Sheesh. So I don't need to be going out tonight, but I'm going there. So you're I'm changing my plans, you know, to go and support someone at a restaurant. Yes, I'll be there having a great time, but I'm changing, I'm altering my plans. Which is not too, listen, it's, you're still doing it to some degree, but it's not, you know, it's not life changing. Whereas with a woman, when I'm invested, I will literally invest everything, all my time into that person. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I forget, I think a lot of men are like this, where you're, you won't, um, you know, they come first in, in regards to business. I'm not funny, but if, if I was with someone now and they was going through, they were struggling, I would literally not have turned up today, which is, which is a great thing. People think, oh, listen, that's, that's a gentleman, it's a nice guy, but do you know something? It's that itself. This is work. This is business. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, not going to the meeting after because I've got to go back and someone's a bit upset. That has a knock on effect. Do you know what I'm saying? But I think as much as it's important to be able to say no, you've also got to do what makes you happy and feels right. And, 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 and you know, sometimes it's very easy to say, well, would they do the same for me? And the reality is if you're a good person, if you're a generous person, probably eight mm. times out of 10, that person wouldn't do the same no. for you. But does that mean you want to change who you are? You know, like- uh, No, you don't change who you are. You know, I don't think it ever changes who you are. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and just go, just going back to your parents for a minute. So when your mom left uh, at five, did, did you maintain a relationship with her growing up or did she disappear for a while? And no, no, I've, I maintained, like we've all, we've all maintained your relationship. Oh, it's just that you weren't living together? No, it just weren't, it wasn't living together. But again, you'd have to know me and my family uh, more in depth. I know you obviously you know me as a person, but you could see the difference between me and my brother. Whereas one's brought up in one house and the other's brought up in the other. You, you can see a massive, there's a very... It's a massive difference. I'm not saying that people can't be different being brought up in the same house, but it, there's a there's a noticeable uh, difference between me and my brother. You know, both done well. We're both in decent. I like to think we're both well-rounded individuals, but you just can see in traits of personality a lot of difference. Well, let's let's talk a bit about bus, uh, business, business, yeah. and uh, and doing well. Uh, I mean, obviously, you you know. Um, as I know you, you know you're a, you're a hungry guy. You're a duck and a diver. You've, yeah. you, you've you've always got your fingers in different pies. Uh, I mean, I would imagine that dates back to back to your early childhood. I mean, I imagine your, your dad's an influence in this respect as well. I mean, did yeah. you always want to get out there grafting and making money? I think look, people to say money doesn't make you happy. That's all bullshit. Money. Is, I'm not saying money itself makes you happy, but it enables you to live a life that makes you happy. It gives you freedom. So to say that money doesn't make you happy is, is bollocks. And when you come from nothing, uh, listen, like yourself, when you come from nothing and you have money, you can't go back. It's like when you've experienced something and in the industry I'm in, or listen, even in real life, I think a lot of people, you're up, you're down. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're not, if you are like, a, you've got that entrepreneur mindset, you know, where you want better, you know, and you take that gamble, you take that risk, you're not doing your nine to five. Now, fair play to people that do nine to fives. My mum does a nine to five. My mum always done a nine to five. My dad always worked for himself. Now, you've got to remember every day when you work for yourself, you wake up with nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? Every day you wake up, you, it's down to you to go out and get it. It makes you hungry. That mindset, I like that mindset because it makes you hungry in life. And I'm still hungry now. I'm still, you know, I've had various businesses and I've tried various things. The people that got to understand is that I've had loads of things that I've, that I've done well from, but a lot of things that I've failed from. Probably more that I've failed from than I've done well from. Well from, but that's part of the journey. That's part that, that the, the whole journey, the, the struggle. You know, that is that's what builds character. How do you feel about those failures? You know, when they happened at the time. And, yeah. I mean, have you, have you had some failures which have been which have been public as well since you've been in the public? Of course, eye? there's been loads of failures since I've been public. But this is the thing. It's like obviously in the tabloids, I'm always the front guy. I'm the full guy. So these these businesses, but sometimes when they fail, they actually haven't failed because they're bad 
businesses. It's been a breakdown of there's other things. There's a lot deeper issue breakdown with communication with the partners, um, lack of effort from certain people. Um, some listen. I'm not trying to say I'm you know I'm and the sugar and everything I touch that turns to gold because obviously doesn't. But and there's been some failures down to me, down to lack of effort from me. But I can hand on heart say that most of the time the businesses that I've had have been good. Businesses, even ba- like dating back to when I've had bars, the restaurants, they've all been good businesses, but certain people haven't stepped up and they've caused me problems. Like, it's not me. Like, I, they haven't done what they are meant to do. You've got to remember, obviously, I'm, when people get into business with me, whether it be a restaurant, bar, endorsing a brand, I'm the face. My, my job is to, for, for exposure, marketing, getting it out there. Is that, typi- face. Is that typically your only only role at the time? I mean, I mean, do, do you do you ever put capital into these businesses? Do you ever get involved in the operations, no. or do you just you're the marketing, you're the brand, you're the face? Right. So, see, in terms of capital, in the past I have, but that's not smart business. I'm I'm a commodity myself. You know what I bring to the table is listen. Otherwise, someone wouldn't invest in me. There's no point in me going to business with someone if I'm going to put the money in. I don't need that person. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. If me and you are going to do a business, if you want to get involved with me and you want to you want to get it out there, why am I going 50-50 with you? What are you bringing to the table? Do you know what I'm saying? I don't need you. I might as well just pay the whole thing myself. You know, no, 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 I know what you're yeah. saying. So, okay, so, so fleshing on from that then, as, as someone who's had multiple partnerships yep. and multiple partners which break down as well mm. what if you're looking to partner up with someone now if you're looking to you know to go into business what do you think are the traits of a good business partner traits um right you need someone in the trenches so yes i listen i'm very hands-on someone because, will put the graft in when it yes counts. but i'm very hands-on anyway as you know like i if it's my business it's my name um from look from the past experiences what when, when i've when i've not been hands-on or not when i've just tried to sit back thinking i'm just going to be the face if you like um that's caused me problems. And then when it all goes peaked on, all, got, all fucks up, it's all on me. That other person, no one knows who fucking who I had the kitchen with or no one knows who I had this bar with or the brand or whatever else. No one knows that. Do you know what I'm saying? It's always, oh, Lockie's, Lockie's, Lockie's kitchen, Lockie's bar. It's all on me. So it makes it look like I've had loads of failed businesses when the people that I've actually invested in, they haven't pulled their finger out. And listen, I can hand, again, I can hand on heart and say that, I'm not put all the blame, but they haven't done what they're what they're meant to do. I'm not the details person. See a lot. Of, you see a lot of time with these these influencers. People say, "Oh, it's this business failed." Or used to be. Tattoo was notorious for it. All the girls setting up shops or bars, and they was failing. No, we was always the face. We're busy filming. Like people think I'm just sitting here and someone's following me around the, around the camera, and they think I don't do fuck all all day. That's what that's what makes me die. People think I don't do anything all day. They ring me up. Like, they think I'm not doing anything. Like I'm literally just sitting at home or I'm going to the gym. I'm busy. We, we, we're still we're still out. You're active. You know what I'm saying? Running errands, doing whatever you're doing. Your day-to-day business working. This t- today, like people got people ringing me, bugging me now, nah, like as if I'm not doing anything. Do you know what I'm saying? So when I'm investing in someone, yes, I've got time to sit there to market, um, whether it be a brand, you know, whatever whatever type of business. But they've got it's all the, all the detail stuff, like the the stuff that's in the when I say in the trenches. The reason why I would invest in someone is that they are a business person in, you know, in that field. So whether it be a bar or restaurant, I never had a kitchen. For instance, just to talk about Lockie's kitchen. I never had a kitchen. I haven't got a background working in a restaurant. The person I got involved with, they invested the money and they had a background. It's an Italian guy. He had a background in kitchen, you know, in in like being in, in yep. restaurants. Then when it comes to it, he was never there. He never been to the restaurant. Been to the restaurant twice. Come to it on opening night. He was never there. How can I? How how am I supposed to run a business that I've never even a completely different industry that I don't know about and I've never worked in? Do you know what I'm saying? I have no background in it at all. I had an idea. I had an, I was there all the time. People coming down. We want to see me. Lucky Lucky's kitchen. I'm there all the time, meeting people. Like you know, being who I am. They want to meet me. They see me on the telly. They want to come and meet me. Do you know what I'm saying? People coming down to see me. I'm not there cooking. Do you know what I mean? I'm not there cooking. I'm not there serving people. You know, I'm just there, you know, being the host, if you like. Everything else was meant to be down to someone else. That was left to me. Like I said, how can, I, how can you leave something? You know, I want to come and run. Listen, you will never, never employ me to come and run your business when I've got no background in it. You, you, you set yourself up to, to fail. Does that make sense? But then Absolutely. when it all goes to when it goes to shit, who does people? Who do people look at? They look at me. Mm-hmm. I'll lock it. I'll look. Oh, fucking his kitchen's flop. No, it didn't flop. The kitchen was a great idea. 
it's still a great idea now. I'd love to do the kitchen again with someone else who's a proper businessman, with who's proper, you know, who knows about that business, who's got the time to invest in that business. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. And not wasting my time. See, look now, I'm a lot more, like, like we're going back to, I'm a lot more selective with my time. I ain't got time to waste. So when people are not putting their finger out, fuck them. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about exercise, which is obviously mm. massive massive part of your life and also yeah. one of your businesses as well. Uh, you said that when you were a kid, you were a little fatty. Uh, when did um, when when did that change? When did you get into exercise, uh, health, fitness? So I've always always liked sports. Um, you're either one of them kids or you're not. I've always liked sports. I played every sport when I was at school. Uh, as I got a bit older, I moved more into the gym. Uh, but I like, you know, I like mixing it up. You know, I don't do weights every day. I used to, at one point, I got, I got mad on the weights. And, um, you know, you, get, you do get a bit obsessed with it, a bit carried away. But um, I like to mix it up. Like the other day I'm playing tennis, I'm playing squash. Do you know what I'm saying? I like to mix things. Or I'll go swimming. I do a bit of weights. I do a bit of running. I mix it up, you know, either jujitsu, a bit of boxing. I like to keep active because keeping active fundamentally it's good for your mind it's good for your body uh, it keeps you healthy yes and obviously you know if you train the right way especially with what I do it's uh, very like aesthetic and how's your eating because I mean obviously right, you, I'm very disciplined I'm very disciplined obviously last night went out we had a bit of food I still go out I have a cheat meal I go out and I eat if I'm out I'm in company I have a few drinks I'll go and eat what I want but you know 90% of the time I'm very disciplined you know, I'm very, I'm very disciplined with my diet. And this is the problem. I've got people messaging me day in, day out, asking me about, you know, about their diet, about their workouts. There's, there's, no, there's no quick fix, you know? There's no quick fix. Even people talk about steroids. See steroids. You don't just do a steroid and you all of a sudden get muscly. You've you still got to train. Yeah. There's loads of guys down at the gym, big fat guys. They do steroids. They do loads of steroids. They, they're fat. People, listen, people understand, oh, he's on the roids or she's, or she's, you know, doing some crazy diet. It still takes discipline. You know, it takes discipline to stay away from the, you know, to eat regimented meals, you know, keep it like a low, a well-balanced diet, you know, which isn't, which is like, you know, it's not really a low carb, high protein diet, you find. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a well-balanced diet. A lot of people now, you know, you go out, they're sitting there eating pizza, you know, burgers, pasta, and they're wondering why they're not losing weight. Eating bread. You can't eat, you can't be eating bread. You know, bread is the worst thing in the world to eat. If you're if you're looking to lose weight, you're not sitting there, whether you're sitting there in this little thin bread, going to a Turkish, going to an wherever you're going, bread is that is the, I, I do find when, when I'm yeah. when I'm trying to go on because I don't really do diets, I just try and eat better because you know, like with my lifestyle, similar to yours, going out a lot, entertaining, seeing clients, you know, you can't say no to uh, to going out to restaurants. It'd be eat very easy to sit at, sit at home with us meal yesterday. Food. Right. I mean, I I wasn't as well behaved as you last night, but yeah. you know, I find if I cut bread out, be. if I cut bread out, if I cut puddings yeah. out, I mean that's 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 half the fucking battle. It's probably saved me yeah. six, seven, eight hundred calories a day just that. If you cut out bread, it's a game changer. I tell people this all day. There's other things we go when you start sitting there talking about diets and stuff. I carb cycle. I keep my carbs low. People need to realise that I still eat carbs. I don't do like what this Eddie fella does and just completely not eat carbs. I eat carbs. You need to eat carbs because basically, if you cut anything out completely. Um, when you start eating that again, it will have a negative effect on your body. You know, these people that do these crash diets, like you've got not funny, you go and do these diets when you're just having a couple of juices or, you know, you still need to, look, you still need to be balanced in what you're eating. It's like being balanced in life. Everything's about balance. Balance is the key with, with, with everything. Um, yeah, not for me. So how did the fitness app come about? The fitness app come about because, again, a lot of people are asking me about training and, I see a lot of these apps out there. A lot of these, a lot of these people do these apps. And they're just, they're just money spinners, you know. Um, and these guys, a lot of, a lot of these, you know, these, these PTs, with all due respect, mention no names. A lot of them are just genetically gifted, or they are just taking X, Y, and Z, and they are having a little cheat. Again, they still have to work hard to get into the position where they are. That's what I'm saying. There's no yeah, quick fix. Whether you're doing steroids or any sort of diet, there's no quick fix. It takes discipline. So you can't take that away from anyone. Uh, don't get me wrong, but some people are more genetically gifted than others. You know, some people, you know, you see these people that go out, eat whatever they want, and they literally just don't put on any weight. And you get other people on the other end of the spectrum. But it still takes discipline. And for me, there's so much 
bollocks out there. And I had so many people asking me, you know, so many people, I've been on TV a long time, I've got so many people that look up to me and ask me, you know, value my opinion. That's half the reason why I've done the app. And the app's done done really well. Like, it's from the app straight away. The the amount of downloads has been crazy. You know, I've kept it, um, I've, done, I've started with a free, um, listen, the app's free to download. There's a free trial. And even after the trial, it's only seven forty nine, which is very cheap for an app. A lot of people are charging, you know, double, three times that. And with that, you're getting, you know, Cali trackers, you're getting a breakdown, you're getting nutrition plans, you're getting uh, workout plans. You've got an online community, you've got everything there. You've got a lot of content and a lot within that app, you know, for, for, for a very cheap price. And the reason for that, of course, we've still got to run it. It can't be run for free because it takes time. So I can't run it for free. But that is a, that, listen, the price I'm doing it for is pretty much... For fuck all. Just for anyone who doesn't quite make it to the end of the podcast where we'll put all the notes anyway. Okay. Just, just give yourself, just give it a little shout out where they can find it. Okay. From. So yeah, I've, I am um, doing, I've, all, I've got an app called Lockie's Kitchen. Lockie's Kitchen. I've got an app called Lockie's Fitness. Um, yeah, it's my work app. It's my fitness app. Um, if you go and download it, it's got everything you need pretty much to get in shape. It's very, it's very real. It's very simple. You know, it's the thing is, it's simple things, but ultimately... I can tell you exactly what I'm doing. In this app is everything, is how I live, you know? I, I use um, I use a calorie tracker and I track all my macros because if you don't track it, you, you said, how can you maintain or get into shape when you don't actually know what you're, you know, you need to know where you're starting from. So this, you go in and you put in, you put in your, your credentials, um, find out where you're starting from and you can map from there whether you want to, you know, tone up, build muscle or lose weight. Okay, if that makes sense, yeah? Um, and then you can obviously, you, you track what you're doing. You need, to, you need to track what you're eating on a daily basis, your, your, your proteins, your fats, and your carbs. That's the main three things. You can calorie count. I'm not a massive calorie counter, but the, the, the fats, the carbs, and uh, your protein, you need, you need to, to monitor that, you know? And people, like, listen, this day and age, people eat, people overindulge in carbs. You know, everything is carbs, even bits of fruit, you know, vegetables, they're all carbs. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's $7.49 a month. $7.49 a month. And, and there's some add-ons or some upgrades you can pay for more. There's some things. upgrades as well. So at the minute, the, app, the app's quite new. So for $7.49, look, it's it just gives you an in-depth um gives you an in like it gives you an in-depth perspective of what I actually do on a daily basis. I I literally all the all the work, all the nutrition plans, the workout plans, are everything that I do on a daily basis. This is what I live by. So that app is very personal to me. It's not one of these apps I just put my name to. It's my app. If you want to know what I'm doing and how I keep in shape, how I can, you know, yo-yo at one minute where I can overindulge and go out last night, have a few drinks, eat what I want, but then I can still get up and do a photo shoot the next day. It's because I'm living by what I'm doing within this app. Um, now, within the app, at the minute, like I said, it's very new at the minute. I'm going to start. There's going to be upgrades. There's certain things where you can buy more personalized workouts. There's a few people I'm training at the minute. Um, one being Arch. So when people, I'm doing like a, a body transformation with art just to show that it's not, it is discipline. It is what I'm saying. What I'm preaching is the truth. And, I'm, and people are seeing that already. So I'm doing a 12 week, uh, well, I've done a start with a six week transformation with Arch. Doing a 12 week one. What are you doing against the muscle on him? Yes. So he's he's lost a lot of weight. I mean, he looks yes, like he looks a amazing. different yeah. man. I mean, yeah. literally yeah. unrecognizable. Mm. No, listen, he's lost loads of weight. He looks brand new. This is, he's a completely changed man. He's changed his life for the better. I'm proud of him as a friend. I'm proud of him, but he's at a point now where he's got loads of things back on track. He's lost the weight. He sorted himself out. He stopped drinking because that was a, having a negative effect on him. Um, and he's happier than ever. You know, he's still doing TV. He's, um, you know, he's doing uh, stuff for the Arch Band. I'm going to see him tonight. He's, he's performing at Sheesh. And, and he's smashing it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the guy. You know, I'm genuinely happy for him as a friend. Now he wants to, he's come to me like, he's like, look, I've lost loads of weight. He's looking double well, but he now wants to look more Aesthetic. He wants to put on a bit of muscle, if you like, so the right, the right sort of weight. So I'm helping him with that. I'm literally showing him. He's training with me. So people that follow me, you'll see that he's doing exactly what I'm doing. Um, you know, and then he's obviously I'm 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 doing like a one-to-one -one PT and training him. So and that's what I'm gonna start doing within the app. So with the app, I'm gonna start doing one-to-one -one training, online coaching. Plus, I will for selective people, I'll start doing personalized coaching as well, like I'm doing with Arge. You've been quite open with your battles uh, with body dysmorphia. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, people look. People uh, again. It's another. It's, a, it's another subject. It's a bit of a. It's something that people can't always grasp. 
You is can be in shock. Sure. But is that been something that's always been with you, or is that something that's developed what with being on the TV and more in the public eye? Right. So it's it's definitely. I spoke about this on Good Morning Britain the other day. So the body dysmorphia. Everyone's got it in some aspect. It's not just the women; men have it as well. You know, whether you're, you know, you're, 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 you're you have a picture with your friends, and you're you're checking that picture. That's body dysmorphia. Or you might have a look at it, but if you're overly looking, or oh, I'm not, I don't like that one. It, it's insecurities. That's body dysmorphia. You're finding fault in yourself. I look shit there. No, you don't. You're, you're finding fault in yourself. So whether it's just having a picture, whether you're not on TV, you're training, you're a, you're a man or a woman, you're training, you know, you're going away, you're going to my bay, you're going to Ibiza. You want to look, or you're getting married. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's not being comfortable with just who you are at that present point of time. So if that is body dysmorphia. Do you know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. is in some aspect. And obviously it's emphasized when you're on TV or in the public eye, you know, uh, uh, whether you like it or not, this is a very vain industry. Like you, the better you look, the more money you make. Like if I wasn't in shape, there'd be, I wouldn't be doing a fitness app. You know, I wouldn't be getting fitness, fitness endorsements. Like you, you are like, I am a walking, like I'm a business. I'm a walking advert for my own business. If I get out of shape, then if I'm not in shape, no one's going to go and buy my app. Does that make sense? So then the body's more kicks in because then I'm not just competing with other reality stars or other people within this industry. I'm competing with fitness models. Now, fitness, I'm not a fitness model. Fitness models, I'm not afraid. That, that discipline takes goes to another level where they're not out. But since last night, they wouldn't be out drinking, uh, having eaten what we're eating at all. Trust me, I've been at them boys. They live a very regimented and a very, I said, I'll say boring, but with all due respect. Um, like it's horse of course, and they, yes. they love it. They, they love it. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So my hat's off to them. Again, everyone's different. That's their business. They don't, listen, they are, again, they, you, you see, it's, like, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. But the problem is, I can't live that lifestyle doing what I do. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it, it kind of reacts. Well, it's the balance, isn't it? I mean, everything, everything is a trade-off to something else. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think I used to, because I always used to say to myself, oh, well, um, you know, I could be in better shape if I wanted to be, but for, for me, the wine's more important or the sticky toffee pudding's yeah. more, more, more important. It's balance, though. But again, it's, it's then also finding out, do you really mean that or are you just using that as an excuse to ju to justify yeah. why, why, you're not, why you're not putting the effort in? And I think when I then did start to did start yeah. to lose some weight, I then used to look back and so actually, um, I mean, listen, I'll never take it to the extremes, like you say, of a, of a, of a fitness model yeah. uh, and I'll you know, probably struggle to get a six pack. But... I think I was probably making there, excuses, excuses for myself before. You could get there, though. You could get there. Anyone. Oh, I can. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. When I say yeah, struggle, yeah. I don't mean I'm physically incapable. I mean, I just There's other things that, that, you, that, you, that you thrive in. That's, again, it's just like, talking to someone as an individual, I'm talking about me and you here, there's, uh, there's areas that you uh, excel in that I need to be more disciplined in. Not funny, when that last night, we had a few drinks, you went home. I stayed out. See that discipline? You're up, 9 a.m., work it. Do you know what I'm saying? Me doing that, that has a knock-on effect. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm good, to, I'm not 100% today. I, I would have been, do you know what I'm saying? We probably should have done this after, we should have done it night tonight. But see, see that discipline. So in some aspects, where I go out, like we went out for a bit of dinner, I'm already in, I'm, I'm limiting my carbs. Even last night when I'm a little bit, I've had a few drinks. I'm still limiting the carbs. I'm, I'm just eating purely protein. Yeah, and you might be in, you know, a bit tempura, more rice. Yeah. Yes, tempura. <laughs> prongs when I stayed away from them. So I'm disciplined like that. But like I'm saying that at the same time, so that's one good thing. But then, you know, it's 11 o'clock, whatever time it was. I've then stayed out with a few friends, I had a few more drinks. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But when I've got something to do today, I shouldn't have, you know, I should have just gone home. Like you as a professional. So that's what I'm trying to say. In one area, you might not excel in, but in other areas you do. And it's all about balance. It's, it's, it's finding that it's finding that that balance with anyone. And let's let's look into that a bit and, and, and to kind of see why. Because so, yeah, tr complete true example. I, you, I go home, you don't. Now, I'm not looking at the fact that I've gone home because oh, I'm so disciplined and yeah, you know, yeah. I, I need to do but this. It is disciplined. I go, yeah, I mean, it's like a, say a byproduct is the discipline because I w think if I stay out tonight, yeah. I know that I had a podcast before this one yeah. and I also have some calls and stuff to make. I know that if I go to bed at three o'clock full of booze and get up at six, I'm going to feel a fucking dog, like an absolute dog. Yeah. And I guess I'll be 
I'll be punishing myself. And as fun as it may be to stay out for a couple of hours more, I know it's not going to be worth it tomorrow no, it's never morning. Worth it. And, uh, and in the heat of the moment, though. That's my, yeah. I guess that's my, it's not that I'm clever and super disciplined. I just say, I don't want to feel like shit tomorrow. And no, I don't no, want no. to let people down. That what, why can't you do it? That is discipline. That is discipline. Because see, with me, it's all or nothing. Out of sight, out of mind. That, me as a person, I, like, I can, if I am, I can quite easily, you know, not go out and not drink. Like, and, and, and I can quite easily not come, do you know what I'm saying? I can, look, for me, I was always going to drink yesterday. If I'm out, I'm out. There's no like going, I've never, I'm not that guy that goes down a pub for a, a couple of, couple of beers after work. I've never been that guy. My dad's never been that guy. If we're out, we're out. So what I do is I don't put myself in that environment. You know, I'd rather be, if I'm, it's an environment where I'm just clean living, train every day, working, grafting every day. Yeah. That is, I'm a completely different person. Don't worry, I'm still professional. I'm here now. I'm still here. I'll still turn up. But I'm I'm a better person, a better version of myself had I not been out last night. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and if, listen, fair play to you. Fair play to anyone. Go out, have a few drinks. Go home. I can't. And there's a lot of people like that. Well, like you say, it, it is. It's a parallel to the to the food that I guess you you couldn't do that, so you went out. I guess because yeah. that was more important to you to go out. Whereas with the food. You know, you could avoid the tempura and I couldn't because I just think I don't care enough. I want that tempura. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want that tempura because, mm. you know, I, I don't care about the um, the lack of yeah. six pack. Don't get it wrong. Look, it's not when it's having a negative, negative effect. Like say I went out last night and I hadn't turned up today. That's when there's, there's a problem because when you're not doing the, your commitments, work or any sort of commitments, even if you're missing, you know, missing a, a dinner date or a lunch date with a friend, when you're missing commitments because you got out and got on the piss, that's when it's a problem. If it's affecting you, in that sense, that's that's when you need to really look at yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, what I'm getting at is just that having that mindset where if I just left, I would feel a bit better. You know, I'll be that bit better. Like I said, like anyone watching this now, I'd be like, you're sweet. I know I'm sweet, but I'm just saying, you're a professional. This is what I do. But at the same time, I know myself. I'm not 100%. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And that's because of my own life choices. And again, going back to having that discipline, you know, discipline in, in certain areas. And just going back to the body dysmorphia, when, like you say, everybody has it because, you know, we all look at a picture or, yeah. you know, compare ourselves a bit, but how do you control it so it it doesn't it doesn't get away from being, let's say, uh, a competitive reason for you to try and better yourself to where it actually becomes a problem. Because, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, if I look at a picture and say, oh, you know, Lockie looks a bit more yeah, muscular yeah. than me, I need to uh, I need to get to the gym. Yeah. That's positive body dysmorphia. If I look at you and go, No, no, me, no, that's, gonna, not, that's I'm, negative. I'm, no, I'm no, gonna... that's negative body dysmorphia. You looking at me thinking, you looking at me thinking, oh, Lockie looks a bit muscly, I need to get down to the gym. That's negative. No, but I mean, I'm using it for a positive reason. Like, yeah. I'm not going to punish no, myself. But I think that's actually a negative. I think that's actually, because since back in the day, I used to look at Van Damme or Arnie. That is where it all stems from. You sit, you're the hero looking a certain way. You're competing subconsciously. You're competing with that person. You're thinking that heroes, mate, in everyday life, but, heroes don't look like that. But but I guess I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not doing it to compete with you. Yeah. I'm using that to make myself better, but not at the expense of my health and safety. Like I'm not going right. to get fucking health. This is, I, I'm going to go and starve myself. No, and, but this is where it goes wrong because, right, you're looking at for a, a, um, inspiration, but people get obsessed with it. And, and get, you're not me. So you're not going to look like me. And I guess, yeah. and that and that was my question. You where where where's the line between inspiration yeah. and that's where and it becomes trouble. And that's what I'm trying to say. This is where it's a very slippery slope. It's like when someone's confident or arrogant, it's a very fine line. You know, inspiration or whether it's been a positive and a negative. You can be I, I look at certain fitness models, or like I said when I was a kid, I wanted to be I wanted to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, I think most boys did that was how a hero in your head, that's what, you know, Superman, Batman, they're not fat, are they? You know, they're, they're how you how you look at them as kids. That's what you want to look at, but then you're so it's, it's subconsciously trying to achieve that can sometimes get carried away. You can get lost in trying to achieve perfection, and perfection is ultimately in your own head. You know, what I'm saying you've got to love yourself. Yeah, I know I'm in good shape, but I will still find fault. I'll take pictures, even though I'm ripped. I've got a six pack. I'll still find fault in myself. Do you know what I'm saying? I'll that you know. People think I'm mad. When I look at pictures sometimes, I, I, if I show, add a picture of me, I'll find fault in it. Even me looking ripped. 
when people give me compliments, I find it hard to take compliments because I will look at a picture. I'm not seeing what they see. Does that make sense? Um, and that's down to you as a person and in not becoming. This is why I spoke the other day because I see a lot of kids getting obsessed, a lot of young adults. There's adults our own age. It's, I've got some of my friends the same age as us, older than us, um, that talk to me about it. That's, 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 that's one problem. But when, when the youngsters are becoming obsessed um, with, with their body, they should be obsessed about business, about life, being a better person. Don't get obsessed with being, you know, looking a certain way. That's a very shallow way and a very negative way to live. What about anxiety? I think you, you, you've, you've struggled with that as well. And so I think everyone struggles with anxiety to some aspect. Even me, someone that comes into the room, I'm very confident. I go into certain situations, you know, I meet a lot of people from different backgrounds, you know, as you probably do, um, with business, uh, events, networking. And, you know, sometimes it is when you're going to a, into an environment that you you're not comfortable with, you know, they're not one of your own, if you like, not something you're brought up with or brought up around, where it's, it's, it's second nature. It can be uncomfortable and it will give you anxiety. Like I could have done a, a podcast with someone else and that person I might never have met before. It's natural. It, it might be anxiety. It might, might be minimal anxiety, but it's still anxiety to a certain degree. Turn up the, the, you know, the anticipation, you know, apprehension of meeting that person. You don't know, you know, you need to gauge that person. I could have sat here and not got on. You could have been, hard whoever you are like hard work and it would have made this podcast painful and how how do you control that? i mean i guess for you or for the people listening to that. this what, what do you do to make it to you make can, it better again overthinking overthinking is the worst thing in the world overthinking overanalyzing see whether it be body dysmorphia um and you're overanalyzed don't stop stop overanalyzing take a couple of pictures just stop you have to just stop yourself you know and be like listen that's sweet that, that one's fine done leave it at that don't keep looking at it Pick a pick, do you know what I'm saying? Go into a room. Don't overthink it. I could sit in there thinking, oh, is he thinking I'm talking a load of bollocks? Wherever I am, wherever I'm not. We're here now. We're having a chat. This is real. This is raw. You know, no smoke and mirrors. It is what it is. Stop worrying about how people look. So I could be sitting there thinking about, oh, what are people going to think about what I'm saying? He's going to think, oh, is he talking? Fuck them. They can turn it off. Turn it off. You don't like it. Don't listen. You don't like me. Don't follow me. Don't like me. Don't be around me. Don't invite me on your podcast. It is, this is me accepting who you are, being comfortable with that. That's the power, you know? And like I said, even though I'm this, I'm this self-aware, and I'm, which is apparent itself, I still have days, good and bad days, where I will overanalyze certain things, you know? Um, and it just is what it is. And it's heightened in this day and age because of everything, you know, social media, um, media in general, you know, what, what we're told to look like, eat, drink, sleep, whatever, whatever we're told to, to be as a person is over and nice anyway. And then being in this industry, when you're actually that person in the magazine, it's then tenfold, which makes it a lot more difficult. Now, I'm not sitting here saying I want, you know, I've done this again, I keep saying I've a Good Morning Britain. I've done Good Morning Britain the other day and I spoke about, it. I'm not looking for, I was just making people aware of it. The people even like me, that people might look up to, and people might think, listen, he's a good looking guy, he's in shape, he's very confident. Even someone like me, probably more so someone like me, suffers from body dysmorphia because it, it's that pressure. Like, if I all of a sudden put on a lot of weight, straight away, tabloids, what's happened to Lockie? Do you know what I'm saying? I'd be in the tabloids. I'd make Daily Mail. If I turn up one day and I was fat, say like, like last time you've seen me on Ripped, if I, if I, you know, in a couple of weeks' time was pictured eating a fucking donut, Big fat fuck. That would be that would make headline news. You think how is that important? How is that? Listen, how is that the, the the national news? But it would, and that's when the added pressure comes. It's what people don't acknowledge. It's what I was trying to get at. Um, and then also, what I was letting people know that it's okay. Listen, it's, listen. You don't got to be in shape twenty four seven. You haven't got to look perfect twenty or perfect in your mind twenty four seven. Just be comfortable with yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and stop giving a fuck. That's a powerful thing as well. Stop overanalyzing. Stop giving a fuck. You know, everyone, no one thinks about, no one thinks about you as much as you think about yourself. That's what you need to remember. Well, listen, you're um, a reality TV veteran. Yep. Uh, many shows. Tower, Very obviously, many. the biggest. Uh, Celebrity Action on the Beach, The yep. Challenge. What, what are we missing? What else have you done? Uh, subscribe dating. Um, uh, of course. Done a few other little ones. He's, um, you know, a few of these little little shows, if you like, not little shows, but more like just the one dayers or a couple of days. What, what's what's your favourite? Um, listen, I, I, I'm not. Look, I love Towie. I did love Towie. Was I enjoyed it? I wouldn't have done it for ten years um, if I didn't enjoy it. Um, 
Terror would probably terror becomes second nature. Why did you leave? I haven't left at the minute. It's the door's still open, but what's happened? I took a I took a bit of time out to pursue other things. So since so a boy, one of my boyhood dreams, like see that now I'm at a point, right, where you know I'm in my thirties and I feel very comfortable, very content within myself. Now saying that, listen, like I said to you, body dysmorphia, anxiety, certain other things that a lot of people suffer from. I do have them problems still. Yeah, I still have them problems, but they're not, they're not, they're not, they don't hinder my daily routine. I still go out and do my daily business. I'm not locking myself away. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I still get on with life because life goes on. It is what it is. You know, I'm not mentally stronger than that. But having them problems, um, I'm not at a point where I'm that confident. I've, if anything, I feel like I'm in my peak of my life. I feel very well rounded as an individual. I feel very comfortable with myself and my own skin. And now I'm trying to pursue certain dreams. So one of them is acting. I've always wanted to be an actor. Now, I'm not just woke up one day and thought, look, I don't reality. I fancy doing acting. I've gone away. You know, I've took a, I took a back step from reality. You know, I've stepped away from Towie. I've gone and done acting classes. I'm doing acting classes with Jack Ryder, who's been on EastEnders, Jamie from EastEnders. I'm pursuing something. I'm investing. It's cost me money. It's not free. I'm putting a lot of money. I'm losing money in other areas. You know, I've stepped away from other very lucrative endorsements for me. You know, I've been offered a lot of money to do certain things. I stepped away from that because I need to clean up my image. And being an actor, you can't do certain things. It's a very clicky industry. You know, it's this this is a full-time job. Me being me is a full-time job. Even reality, there's a lot, reality is a lot harder than people realize. There's a lot more to it. Not everyone can do it. People just think, oh, it's one of these realities. Go and do it. Go and sit on camera. It's a lot more to it than just being on camera and, just, you know, just it's not one man and a camera. It's a full setup. Even the day is very basic setup. If you're on set, for reality, there's three characters, there's a full crew there. It's like you're filming a movie. People don't realise that. It's a, it's a full-time thing. There's a lot. There's a lot of investment from you as a person. But that was one part of my life and I enjoyed it. I loved it. But I, my, my uh, you know, admiration and my... You know, where I wanted to be uh, in life, you know, my five-year plan, I want to be an actor. I've always wanted to be an actor since I was a young kid. I've always loved the movies. You know, we all love the movies, but I am actually love, you know, I sit there and I'm obsessed with films, all different types of films. You know, I sit there watching films. Like, I've watched films back to back all day. I don't sit there watching normal TV. I watch films. I'm a proper film geek. Every type of film, you know. And yeah, like I said, I've always wanted to be an actor. And that's what I've got away now because I want to, because I want to do something. I'm, I'm that comfortable with myself. I've gone away, invested in myself, and that's where I'm going to be in five years. I see myself being in Hollywood, doing a big film, and I'm, I'm going to do that, and I'm doing it for myself. It's not for the fame. It's not for other people. It's for me. It's something that I want to... That's my legacy. That's where I want to be. What's the uh, What's the dream role, the dream film? I see you in a, a Guy Ritchie gangster movie. Listen, I'd love that. See, listen, no, that's a very a very um, obvious obvious role, but being someone, don't say, I'd love to be someone, say like Jason Statham, um, something like that. Jason Statham for me, you know, Jason Safer's like the new Arnie or the new Van Damme. I'd love to be someone like that. Meet Ray Winston, you know, Ray Winston, Jason Statham, that sort of role, you know, it's a very easy role. There's a few films that I'm doing. Um, I was meeting, I met my with my director yesterday before I come and see you. There's a couple of films that I'm doing, you know, um, and that that's them sort of roles. That's very easy. That's the sort of what my background and how I talk and you know, that it's a very easy role for me to fulfill. Um, but that's a starting point. You know, so I'd love to go and do theatre. You know, as well, like, people never ever see me on stage. I'd love to try everything. You know, I'm at the point now where I would actually give everything a go. Whether it's good or bad, I'm going to give it a go. And I'm comfortable myself. And obviously, you sound very, very committed to that. How, you know, talking in terms of, I guess, of failure or of, of commitment to something, how how long will you give the acting? Like you say, the door the door's open on No, tariff, the acting's on me. So listen, I'm not relying on anyone else. The acting's down to me. But it's, what I mean is like, the door. you say the door's open on Tower, you can go back if you want, but you, you also think it's impacting on the acting. I mean, if you, if you haven't made a movie by next year, would you mm. would you still go back to Tower? Oh, no, no, I'm committed to say that. I'm still doing TV. Okay. I've still, listen, I mean, I've, I've just done a reality show, but there's certain shows um, there's certain shows that are, see with the acting, it is a little bit snobby. In that world, it is a little bit snobby. It's not, it's, I don't know if it's snobby is the right word, but it's like, if anything, it's harder as a reality star to make that transition into acting than it is for a Joe Bloggs because you come with a stigma. Yeah. I come as Lockie from TOWIE. Now, I am Lockie. I'm not Lockie. From, I'm Lockie. It's not Lockie from TOWIE, but people pre-perceive pre me as that character. Now, I'm playing myself, but you're... You're still, you, you're you seeing a snippet of me. You're seeing a snippet of me within that show. You know, you've got to remember it's scripted reality. You know, things are set up, you know, uh, for your entertainment. It's a show. People watch EastEnders and they get over-invested. They start thinking, you know, Ian Bill's Ian Bill, Phil Mitchell's Phil Mitchell. That's, they're playing a character. 
Does that make sense? And even though, even reality, when you start on a show like scripted reality, yes, we're playing ourselves, but it's 50-50. It's, it's, it's in the middle. It's a very fine line where a lot of stuff that you're doing, you know, is set up for the entertainment of the viewer. Um, with the acting now, I feel like I can step away, go and indulge being, playing a character, you know, it, it's, that's, that's, that's stepping out of reality for me. And for me, I enjoy it more. I love, I love acting. I love being, the acting, stepping out of my comfort zone, uh, playing someone else or portraying someone else. It's exciting. It's fun. You used to do it when you are a kid. When you are a kid, you got no worries in the world. You'll, you'll sit there, you'll play, you know, well, you're playing, you know, cops and robbers with your pal, you know, cowboys and Indians. You, you know, you're stepping out, you're playing a character. You're, you're, you know, it's, it's, an, it's not reality. That makes sense. Um, so, we talk about scripted reality and things being real or not real. Obviously, your most recent uh, recent reality was um, Celebrity X on the Beach, yep. which started a week or so ago. I started a week ago. I'm not in it at the minute. So I've done this the second time I've done that show. Um, I don't know if my ex Yasmin this time. Uh, how and so how how real are those kind of things? Because we say we say it's scripted. You know, you you kind of playing a playing a role, even though it's yourself. I mean, are, are they? Is it still a surprise when shows like but that? You got to understand, like, see the show. So, me, and my ex, flying out to Grand Canaria and being in a villa for two weeks. That's not reality, is it? Yeah, you know, that's the really scripted parties. Getting us both to go to. I'd never have been to Grand Canaria. I've never have bumped into my ex in that environment had it not been for the show orchestrating that yeah so that's where it becomes scripted that's what people need to understand then see if you you know because most of the time say you see an ex you might bump into an ex uh, you know at a bar restaurants you ain't got to go and speak to them you might see them depending on how who the ex is whether you speak to them is all on you when you're on a TV show you're told you have to I have to engage with that ex whether I like them or I don't they're told you're told to engage do you know what I'm saying because the end result is you know filmed for Entertainment is for, do you know what I'm saying? It's for the for the pleasure of the viewer. Um, so that's when it becomes not reality. So I'm saying, even though it's reality, it's not reality because that was never would never ever have, have happened. Any any goss from the season you can give us? Um, just listen. Can't give obviously too much away. Obviously, you know, everyone knows I'm coming into it. Uh, obviously, me and Yas been on it. We've come into it. Um, I'm just gonna say that there's a lot. There's a lot of emotions. It's quite dramatic. Me and Yasmin always are. We're very, we're very similar. Um, and you know, we're, when we're good, we're good. But when we're bad, we're we're, we're very bad. That's oh. what I'm going to say. It's a, it's a very explosive series. We get to see some fireworks. Yes, yeah, fireworks. Me and Yasmin are great now. Look, we're we're listen, see me and her. She's. We will always be very good friends. I've got nothing but love love for for, for Yasmin, and she'll always be a part of my life. And we'll always be friends. You know, I've got a lot of time for her. Um, but put in the wrong environment. But we get on, we speak, we speak all the time, me and Yasmin, and we're cool. You know, she goes and does her thing, I'm doing my thing. Um, but we're cool, you know. We'll put us in an environment, a certain environment, you know, especially when alcohol's involved. I feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's a remedy for destruction, for chaos, and it does go off. Um, but like I said, we kick off, you know, and we're very, it's, we're very vocal, can be very volatile. But like I said, ultimately, we both love each other have a respect for each other. And that's why we're still friends. We're friends now, you know, but on the show, you're going to see, yeah, mixed emotions. Let's just say a lot, a lot of mixed emotions, highs and lows, but it's not, it's, it's, it's enjoy, you're, you're in, I, I feel better that we had it. We hadn't spoken a year before I'd done it. And oh, really? I, yeah. And I feel, we sort of half did fall out and I feel better. We needed, there's a lot of, when you see someone, there was a lot of emotions. There was a lot of like, there was love there, but a lot of, you know, hurt and anger as well and I think you see that on the show so yeah it's good well, I look forward to checking it out so other than seeing you on the big screen what, uh, what have we got to look forward to next for Lockie obviously I'm doing the app and the minute I've got the app the fitness stuff so in a minute I've not tried to not to spread myself too thinly uh, I'm doing things that you know yes work but things that make me happy like even podcasts I get asked to do podcasts all day I'm here because I get on I get on with we're friends and I feel very comfortable you can see I've just passed up the road bollocks day but I feel very comfortable and I'm doing things that please me, you know? Um, so yes, the acting is where I want to be. It's been a, been a boyhood, a childhood dream. That's where I'm going to be. I will be an actor. You know, I'm still doing reality TV. There's a few shows, big shows that I'm in line for. I want to, to hear back. Still doing reality. I still will probably pop in to TOWIE one day and, and do little cameos here and there. Um, but 
the, the main goal for me is, is the acting. That's where I want to be in the future. Then again, and, and the fitness, the fitness stuff. The fitness keeps me, you know, um, I'll probably go to the gym after this because the, the fitness keeps me mentally sane and it keeps me well balanced and well rounded and it keeps me grounded, you know, going to the gym. I think going to the gym is a cure for anything. So Absolutely. yeah, just mainly just doing things this year and in the future that make me happy. You know, that's, what's, that's what life's about. Well, listen, that's fantastic advice for anyone of yep. any age in any walk of life, buddy. It's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, like I say, always good to do it with a friend. And, uh, you want to get rid of me now, ain't sharp. <laughs> I'm worried about your parking meter. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I look forward to doing another, another one again with you sometime soon, Paul. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching Stripping Off with Matt Haycox. I hope you've enjoyed watching this week's episode, but please remember to like and hit that subscribe button so you can stay in the loop for future episodes. If you've got any burning questions, if you've got any killer ideas, or well slide into my DMs on social at Stripping Off with Matt Haycox, or simply comment below. And I'll see you again next time.